Welcome to our new section on how does it work. So we've had a few questions about turbos, for example, and I thought that we would take you through a particular turbo today because obviously there's a whole range of different turbos out there and we'll perhaps have a look at those turbos in later sessions. But one of the doins of, of turbos that we see in diesel vehicles in particular is the variable nozzle or variable vane or variable geometry turbo. Depending on which side of the Atlantic or which manufacturer you work for, they're all the same thing. So we're going to take you through the variable nozzle turbo. I thought perhaps before we kicked off with the variable nozzle turbo itself, we'll just give you a basic breakdown of why we have turbos in a vehicle and exactly how a turbo works. So initially when turbos first came out, they were there purely to add performance to the vehicle. And the way a turbo generates performance for a vehicle is it literally shoves in as much oxygen as possible in the intake manifold. So the more oxygen that we get in the engine, the more it's able to combust the fuel. So if we have a look at this diagram over here, it's a very simple layout of a traditional turbo layout. So on the one side, we have our exhaust gases that come through the manifold and spin on this exhaust turbine over here. Now this turbine starts to build up more and more RPM. It's connected via a shaft, or obviously a lot more compact, to our compressor blades over here, which then draw in air, compress that air, and force it into the engine. So it's sometimes called forced induction as well. All right, so we've said that initially turbos were designed to provide performance for the vehicle, but there were some catches. So initially turbos were very, very unreliable and really only the domain of race cars. So when turbos first started to feature on passenger cars, they really unfortunately developed a bad reputation for unreliability. So they were very, very expensive and quite unreliable. So we found that turbos actually waned and less and less manufacturers use turbos. But then things changed. So environmental pressures started to mount on manufacturers to produce engines that were far more efficient, more powerful, smaller, and that produced better fuel consumption. So the engineers had to go back to the drawing board and have a look at what they could do to make turbos more reliable. So what made turbos unreliable in the first place? Well, the first thing is, is that turbos revved up to our watering amounts of speed. So the typical turbo in the early days would rev up to 400,000 RPM. The second thing that happened was when you accelerated, the turbo revs would increase. When you came off the accelerator, the turbo revs decreased and that created fatigue within the turbo which made them unreliable. But the biggest challenge with turbos was what happened when you switched off the engine once you would arrived home and stopped the vehicle. Now anything that's metal is a heat sink. So when you stop circulating coolant around either the engine or the turbo, when you switch the engine off it actually gets hotter and substantially hotter. And the, this was true for turbos as well. So when we switched the vehicles off, the turbo was still spinning at very, very high RPM, but it now had no coolant going around and it started to self-destruct. So again, when turbos were introduced on passenger cars, we had to sit for a few minutes in our cars, waiting for the turbos to spool down and switch off. So that was clearly going to be unacceptable if turbos were going to become mainstream. So one of the designs that engineers came up with to overcome these problems was with the variable nozzle turbo. So on this slide over here, I'm going to give you an example of a variable nozzle turbo and how it works. Now, if you remember the days when you'd go to the beach and you'd get these little fans that you'd blow on, what would happen? You'd, you'd blow on that fan and you'd pucker your lips up to blow that fan. And this is exactly what these linkages achieve with a variable nozzle turbo. So when the flow of exhaust gases is low, these linkages close and they restrict the flow of exhaust gases like we do with our lips. And that increases the speed of the exhaust gases, which starts to spool up the speed of the turbo even quicker. Now, we don't want the revs of the turbo to fluctuate like in the old turbos. So the designers wanted the turbo to reach its revs very quickly and then plateau out into a very stable set of RPM. And to do that, what they do is, as the exhaust gas flow increases, they start to open up the linkages, much like you do with your lips, like that on this little fan. So we now had this 
fantastically simple system that's very, very reliable, that produces torque from a turbo at very low RPM. So we, to a large extent, eradicate the problem of turbo lag. And we now have this turbo that's nice and reliable. All right, and here we have the end result of a typical variable nozzle turbo. And here's the torque curve. And you can see the torque curve as well is very consistent. And this is a reflection on the actual revs that the turbo is spinning at. So where in previous turbo technologies, we were revving the turbo up to 400,000 RPM, these variable nozzle turbos typically only reach about 125,000 RPM. And once they reach that, we open up the linkages and we keep a consistent RPM on the turbo, which provides us with consistent torque. So it also adds to the drivability of the vehicle in terms of not having this fluctuation in torque delivery from the turbo as well. And then once we've reached a maximum set of, of RPM, we can actually reduce the burden on the turbo because we no longer need that turbo to provide us with power because the actual RPM of the engine itself is now going to produce the power by itself. So all in all, this is what makes these turbos incredibly reliable, fantastically cost effective and just an all round win-win so solution. All right, so there you have it, the variable nozzle turbo. In future episodes, we are going to be going through the different types of turbos that are out there and there's some really, really interesting turbos and technologies. But we're also going to go through the technologies of all the components on, that we found on vehicles in any case. And there's some really, really interesting stuff to look out for. So don't forget to watch out for future episodes of How Things Work.